آل انڈیا ریڈیو پریزنٹس مارننگ نیوز گڈ مارننگ آئی ایم انوجا کمار دا ہیڈ لائنس کیمپیننگ فار اسمبلی الیکشنس ان مہاراشٹرا اینڈ ہریانہ اینڈ دس ایوننگ Two Lok Sabha constituencies and 51 assembly seats in 17 states also go to polls on Monday. Center says it is determined to conclude the ongoing Naga peace process without delay. India and Philippines agree to work closely to defeat and eliminate terrorism in all forms and manifestations. UK Parliament to vote for Brexit deal today. In sports, third and final cricket test between india and south africa to begin in ranchi and indian junior men's hockey team to clash with britain in the final of sultan of johor cup in malaysia campaigning for assembly elections in maharashtra and haryana and by polls to two lok sabha constituencies and 51 assembly seats in 17 states will come to an end today evening Polling will take place on Monday and the counting will be on the 24th of this month. Prominent leaders across all the political parties are making their last ditch efforts to woo the voters. The two Lok Sabha seats where by polls will be held are Samastipur in Bihar and Satara in Maharashtra. Assembly by polls include 11 seats of Uttar Pradesh, 6 in Gujarat, 5 each in Kerala and Bihar, 3 in Sikkim, 4 each in Punjab and Assam. two each of Tamil Nadu, Rajasthan and Himachal Pradesh and one seat each in Odisha, Telangana, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Meghalaya, Puducherry and Arunachal Pradesh. In Haryana, major political parties BJP, Congress, INLD and Jananayak Janta Party have put all senior leaders in the campaigning. More details from our correspondent. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and State Chief Minister Manohar Lal from BJP, former Chief Minister Bhupendra Hooda and PCC Chief Kumari Selja from Congress and Dushan Chotala and Digvijay Singh Chotala from Jananayak Janata Party are the main leaders who will address public meetings at various places. Interstate borders have been sealed and police is having close eye on any movement of anti-social elements. Jitendra Divedi, AIR News, Karnal. Our correspondent reports that adequate security arrangements have been made in the state to ensure free and fair poll. A report. Around 57,000 officers and jawans of police force have been deployed in all the districts besides 130 companies of central paramilitary reserve force and police force and home guard jawans from Meghalaya and neighboring states. They are conducting flag march in the sensitive area. Chief electoral officer has said, The additional force is being deployed at critical and vulnerable polling booths and the webcasting would also be done so that people could vote without any fear. Ashwini Kumar Sharma, AIR News, Chandigarh. In Maharashtra, senior BJP leader and Home Minister Amit Shah is also scheduled to address rallies in Navapur, Akola and Karjat in Maharashtra. Now we go live over to our correspondent Jay Devi Pujari in Mumbai for more updates. Jay Devi, as uh, campaigning ends today evening and just two days are left for the polling, what are the activities going on in the state? Well, Anuja, several rallies, roadshows, press conferences have been scheduled in the state by leaders across the political spectrum in the run-up to the last leg of electioneering today. On one side, Shiv Sena Chief Uddhav Thakre will be holding rallies in Maan, Mahad, Srivardhan, Uran and Karzat Assembly constituencies while his son. Chief Minister Devendra Fadanmis, who is contesting from Nagpur Southwest Assembly seat, is scheduled to hold a roadshow in his constituency. NCP Chief Sharad Pawar and party leader Ajit Pawar will hold rallies in Indapur and Baramati respectively. Ajit Pawar is himself contesting from Baramati. Anuja. Yes, Jai Devi, the candidates are opting different innovative ways to woo the voters in Pune. Give us some update on it. Yes, you are right, Anuja. Instead of organizing many public meetings today, all eight BJP candidates in Pune city are going to take out bike rallies in their respective wards. Even BJP state unit president Chandrakant Patil will be on a two-wheeler in Kothru in the assembly constituency he is contesting from. The Congress and NCP candidates are also on the rally train in their wards. The local police have asked the political parties to take different routes for the rally so as to avoid face-to-face clash. Anuja. Thank you, Jai Devi. 
by election to the Satara Lok Sabha constituency will be a litmus test for both the BJP and the NCP. Our correspondent has filed this report. BJP is looking at Satara seat as its gateway to western Maharashtra where it seeks to strengthen its inroads made so far in other districts of Sangli, Kolhapur and Solapur. On the other hand, it will be a tough fight for NCP to retain its bastion following large scale defections in the party. The by-election was necessitated by Udendraze Bhosle's decision to quit NCP and join BJP. While BJP is banking on the party's increased strength and Bhosle's popularity in the region, NCP has sole armor of party chief Sharad Pawar's charisma. For AIR News, Manoj Kshir Sagar, Pune. In Uttar Pradesh, electioneering has reached its peak for 11 assembly seats, where by-election will be held on Monday. Details from a correspondent. Chief Minister of State Yogi Adityanath held three rallies yesterday and said that his government is doing development work in state without any discrimination. Samajwadi Party Chief Akhilesh Yadav will hold rally in Rampur today in favor of party candidate Tanzim Fatima, while Congress State President Ajay Kumar Lallu will address a public gathering at Aligarh. Voter awareness programs were also organized at various places where voters took pledge to exercise their franchise. By polls are being held for 11 seats out of which three are reserved seats. In the last assembly elections, all seats except Rampur and Jalalpur were backed by BJP. Sushil Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Lucknow. The center has said that it is determined to conclude the ongoing Naga peace process without delay and that endless negotiation under the shadow of guns is not acceptable. Center's representative and interlocutor for Naga Peace Talks, R. N. Ravi, held a detailed consultation meeting with the primary stakeholders of the Naga Society at Kohima in Nagaland yesterday. The meeting was held as some NSC and IM leaders through various media platforms were misleading the people with absurd assumptions and presumptions over what they have already agreed with the center. Political maturity and wisdom of the Naga leaders who expressed their overwhelming support in favor of a settlement without any further delay is deeply appreciated. Respecting the Naga people's wishes, the center is determined to conclude the Naga peace process without delay. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates, visit our News on AIR app and follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. You can also visit our website www.newsonair.com. India and the Philippines have committed to work closely to defeat and eliminate terrorism in all its forms and manifestations. In a joint press statement, after delegation-level talks with President Rodrigo Duterte of Philippines, President Ramnath Kovin said both countries have been the victims of terrorism. Both our countries have been victims of terrorism. As you know, India has been the target of cross-border terrorism for decades. We committed to work closely to defeat and eliminate terrorism in all its forms and manifestations. The President said that Philippines and India have also agreed to deepen defense and maritime security partnership and to make it a key pillar of their bilateral cooperation. President Ramnath Kovind is on a two-nation tour to Philippines and Japan. Senior IPS officer Anoop Kumar Singh has been appointed as Director General of the National Security Guard NSG. His appointment will be from the date of joining the post up till 30th of September 2020. The Uttar Pradesh government has constituted a special investigation team, SIT, for the investigation of Kamlesh Tiwari murder case. President of Hindu Samaj Party Kamlesh Tiwari was killed in the state capital Lucknow yesterday by two unknown persons. Addressing a press conference, the state DGP O.P. Singh said that police have got some vital leads, including CCTV footage in the case, and very soon perpetrators of the crime will be held. He said that security cover was provided to Kamlesh Tiwari. The lower house of British Parliament, House of Commons, will hold a special session today to debate and vote on Prime Minister Boris Johnson's fresh Brexit deal. Yesterday, Johnson urged MPs to come together to back the deal, insisting there is no better outcome. Johnson had secured a new Brexit deal with the European Union earlier this week. Johnson's Conservative Party holds only 288 seats in the 
seat House of Commons, so he will have to rely on support from other parties and independent lawmakers to get over the line. A five-day long Frankfurt International Book Fair is underway in Frankfurt City in Germany. A stall at the book fair featuring Books of Publications Division of the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting on the 150 years of Mahatma Gandhi has been one of the major attractions this year. Bureau of Outreach Communication of the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting has set up a multimedia exhibition along the sidelines of the Publication Division stall. A special event will be held today, which will include a mock dandi march and a flash mob. The annually held event features book shows, including writers, publishers, agents, as well as movie production houses. It also serves as a common trading ground for media, literary material, and publishing licenses and rights. In cricket, the third and final test match between India and South Africa will begin today in Ranchi. India has already clinched the three-match series 2-0. The match will begin at 9.30 hours. Jharkhand left-arm spinner Shahbaz Nadeem has been added to the Indian squad for the third test after Kuldeep Yadav complained of left shoulder pain. Indian junior men's hockey team will clash with Britain in the final of the 9th Sultan of Johor Cup in Malaysia today. Yesterday, in their final round-robin match, the Indian team and Britain played out an entertaining 3-3 draw. The Inter-Ministerial Committee held a meeting in New Delhi yesterday to review the prices and availability of onions, tomatoes and pulses and augment supplies. According to the Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution, Mother Dairy, has agreed to sell tomatoes at not more than 55 rupees per kilogram. It was informed in the meeting that tomato rates have normalized in most states and the arrivals from Madhya Pradesh have begun, which will have an immediate easing impact on prices. The ministry said arrival of fresh onion stock has begun from Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan and it is expected that prices will show a downward trend in the coming week, especially after Diwali. In case of pulses, the panel decided that there is a sufficient stock at present and it should be immediately assessed and offloaded in the market through Kendriya Bhandar and Safal in smaller packs of half and one kilogram. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has sought Army's contribution towards hand-holding of the Indian defence industry for the indigenous combat systems under Make in India effort. He also appreciated the Army's role in synergizing its effort with all other security agencies in meeting the challenges being faced in Jammu and Kashmir. Addressing the five-day Army Commanders Conference, which concluded yesterday in Delhi, Mr. Singh singled out Army as the last resort for the country in all challenges facing the nation. And now for an overview of today's newspapers, it's over to Subhadra Ramachandran. Thank you, Anija. A front page headline in all dailies covered the news of FATF retaining Pakistan on the grey list. Curve funding of terror or face blacklist. Park is warned, writes the Indian Express. CBI charging Chidambaram with forgery, corruption and cheating also hogs the limelight in all the newspapers. Talking of Indians deported by Mexico returning home, the Times of India reports, U.S. dream crushed by 311 Indians relieved to be home. A Hindu business line headline reads, India's unemployment problem may worsen as robots snatch away jobs. All boys scenic school set to induct girls as a pioneer. Expecting air pollution crisis in the coming weeks in Delhi, NCR, environmental authorities say, let employees work from home, carpool, writes the Hindustan Times. CJI recommends Justice a. S. A. Bobade as his successor, writes most dailies. And finally, the world's first female spacewalking team of NASA astronauts made history high above the Earth, reports the Asian Aid. First, all-female team does a spacewalk. With that, it's back to you, Anuja. Thank you, Subhadra. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Campaigning for assembly elections in Maharashtra and Haryana ends this evening. Two Lok Sabha constituencies and 51 assembly seats in 17 states also go to polls on Monday. Centre says it is determined to conclude the ongoing Naga peace process without delay. India and Philippines agree to work closely to defeat and eliminate terrorism in all forms and manifestations. UK Parliament to vote for Brexit deal today. In sports, third and final cricket test between India and South Africa to begin in Ranchi. And Indian junior men's hockey team to clash with Britain in the final of Sultan of Johor Cup in Malaysia. 
And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.